two appointments that I have um, made me understand how important this is, um, being able to communicate in a medical setting. I um, came to an ER at um, Children's Hospital and uh, there was this family, they, they assigned me to be with them. It was a little girl, she was like um, three years old and was with her mom and um, her daddy and they were able to speak no English at all or whatsoever. Um, when I actually uh, arrived to the ER, they were leaving and, and I said, well, wait, you have to uh, wait until you actually uh, seen by a doctor. And they said, no, the doctor already saw us. And well, the, this little one, her lips were all uh, purple and you know, she looked very sick. And, and uh, I said, no, why, why do you say that? Uh, I said, well, we went there and the doctor gave us um, this medication and she's okay. And then we're going home. And it happens that actually they went to the triage. The doctor gave them Tylenol so that the fever will go down. And then, you know, they thought they were, everything was done. It ended to be pneumonia for the little girl, and she was hospitalized for four days or five days afterward. And um, I realized there how important it is to actually to communicate. It's, it's life. It's, it's life that we're talking about. It's, uh, we're talking about numbers, and we say, you know, um, we want to save money, and we need to do that. But in the end, this is about lives. Also, this system... Uh, that we have right now is extremely inefficient. We have two middlemen, and uh, the money that's supposed to, the money that government pays to us, $59.88, only smaller part, less than half, comes to us, and the rest is kind of wasted, and this is also unacceptable, and this has to be taken care of. And we want union rights. We want to be protected. I feel unprotected. I feel like I'm just <laughs> left, you know, on my own. And uh, there is no protection, no security for us. The doctor doesn't speak Spanish and the patient doesn't speak English. Um, you know, we're going to be doing the... <laughs> for people to understand, that doesn't work. And so we need to be able to communicate efficiently and um, also... Aside from just knowing regular everyday language, um, like situations like hello and bathroom and those kind of things, we're dealing with a situation that's a little bit more complicated where you're dealing with medical terminology or court terminology where the person has to know what the words mean because their life depends on it. You know, that's my issue. This, this whole thing doesn't make sense because people's lives depend on it. These people we're talking about are not only uh, limited in language, in speech, but they're also limited in writing, you know, literacy uh, le level in their own language. They can't even write or sign their name. Most of the people put crosses as the signature. And uh, these people, when they confront the uh, uh, social services or doctors, they have no way of communicating with them or telling them what they, you know, came up, uh, you know, way, or what they came for. Um, my main line here, my main job is in medical. And uh, for example, in labor and delivery, um, women tend to not talk to male in between labor. So interpreter like myself plays a very important role as far as secrecy or um, privacy. And so um, they would be more comfortable to talk to female interpreter even behind curtain or inside the actual labor and delivery section. Um, I have been in situations where um, parents have been uh, explained a procedure, a treatment plan that they have to follow strict stri uh, pl uh, treatment plans they have to follow at home. If any of those things were not to be followed uh, perfectly, that could mean major delay on, a, uh, on recuperating or perhaps even um, uh, getting farther into, into the, the illness. Because, I mean, it, it's, it, obviously that is important. But also, I, I tend to think legally. I imagine that if um, this thing doesn't get strained out and we don't find a way to, to fix it, um, there's, there could be legal consequences. There's a fallback plan, which would be that it would fall onto the, the responsibility of medical providers to pay the cost, which means that in most cases those medical providers would refuse to accept Medicaid patients. Job as well as is needed, 
Um, our own program is at also at risk of the chopping block, but most right now I'm focused on the interpreter issue. Um, I deal with very sensitive uh, psychological, emotional issues, domestic violence, abuse risks, suicidal, homicidal risks, things of that sort. Uh, needing to deal with uh, accessing resources. With the immigrant population, we work with pregnant moms, moms with babies. Um, interpreters are absolutely essential. For me to get to what is going on with someone, I need a live interpreter there. I couldn't be able to do a phone interpreter, it's not nearly as effective. Uh, pick up on the cues. Sometimes I need to refer them to their doctor, bring in the nurse, there are medical issues at risk, have accurate interpretation given the symptoms presented, and I'm not a nurse, but I need to refer, make sure they're getting services. If I don't have an interpreter, you know, the medical issues won't be addressed nearly as well when I'm out there. The, um, the psychological issues, the accessing of resources for people who don't know how to access resources, the social isolation, trying to deal with these issues would be overwhelming. And I don't know the language concerned primarily that one of the most vulnerable populations in the state is going to lose even more of their rights, even more of their ability to protect themselves. Um, they are completely dependent upon interpretation in order to get their basic medical needs met. In order to understand their doctor, then they need to be able to have a professional interpreter who can tell them what is happening with their health, potentially with their lives. If we cut these interpreter services, we are sending people to the emergency room. And it's really a crapshoot as to whether or not that will actually save the state any money at all. I came here because interpreting services are on the chopping block to be cut from the state budget. And I'm here because I believe it's very important for them to be saved. Not only because it's my job, but because there are many, many ling limited English proficiency patients who won't be able to communicate with their doctor unless they have an interpreter. Um, and there are 900 patients a day in the state who need an interpreter to communicate with their doctor. And if that service isn't there, there will be miscommunication, there will be more illnesses, there will be more ER visits, and it's very important that these services are saved. So I interpret it for people at Children's Hospital, at specialty clinics, at Swedish Hospital. People come from all over the state sometimes to travel to specialty clinics to be seen. And they're making very important medical decisions. Sometimes these are new mothers, sometimes these are seniors. Uh, these are people who are at their most fragile when they're sick, when they're most vulnerable. And in order to make decisions about their health care, they need to understand what's going on. And it's very important. Uh, so I'm asking to call your legislator to send them emails and ask them to save interpreting services. And here's why you should care even if you're not a limited English proficiency speaker. Uh, Medicaid providers are already reduced, uh, reimbursed at such low rates that they won't be able to provide interpreting services on their own to pay for them unless the state pays for it. Uh, what these providers said they will do is that they will drop out of the Medicaid network altogether because they won't be able to provide equal access to all patients. We're united to give a voice to quality services and fair treatment for LEP patients. It began with a few people and now an overwhelming majority of interpreters are supporting Interpreters United to win improvements for professional interpreters and the clients we serve. We help save $16 million in state and federal funding for the Medicaid interpreter program when it faced elimination in the governor's budget. We saved over 2,000 jobs and protected the services for 240,000 patients. United, we can win. We pass a bill that gives us the right to form a union, but first, we need to win our union election. Today, we are here at the Public Employment Relations Commission to turn in our cards signed by an overwhelming majority of interpreters. Yes, it's time to vote for our union. Ya es tiempo de votar por nuestra unión. Yes, it's time to stop wasting money. Yes, it's time to stop unfair treatment. Yes, it's time to have an equal voice for quality care. After verifying our majority, PERC will schedule an election. Watch your mailbox for the ballot. And when your ballot comes in the mail, make sure to do your part. Both Interpreters United, Federation of State Employees, 
and make history happen now. This election is a vote for fair pay, a vote for fair rules. This is an historic day for professional, independent contract interpreters and the patients we serve. Tell other interpreters about it. We're Interpreters United. Find us on the internet. I'm voting yes for the union. Voy a votar sí. I am voting yes. I am voting yes. To ask you to save spoken language interpreters for services for DSHS and Medicaid clients, this program was eliminated in the governor's proposed budget. It serves 250,000 limited English speaking persons who otherwise cannot communicate with their doctors. This program is critical to ensure access to state and federally funded health and social services programs. By eliminating this program, the state will forfeit 12.2 million in federal matching funds to save 4 million in state money. Receiving medical services without understanding them is not meaningful. In fact, it can be quite dangerous. These people we're talking about are not only uh, limited in language, in speech, but they're also limited in writing, you know, literacy uh, le level in their own language. They can't even write or sign their name. Most of the people put crosses as the signature. And uh, these people, when they confront the uh, uh, social services or doctors, they have no way of communicating with them or telling them what they, you know, came up, uh, you know, what they came for. As aside from just knowing regular everyday language, um, like situations like hello and bathroom and those kind of things, we're dealing with a situation that's a little bit more complicated where you're dealing with medical terminology or court terminology where the person has to know what the words mean because their life depends on it. You know, that's my issue. This, this whole thing doesn't make sense because people's life depend on it. I tend to think legally. I imagine that if um, this thing doesn't get straightened out and we don't find a way to, to fix it, um, there's, there could be legal consequences. There's a fallback plan, which would be that it would fall onto the, the responsibility of medical providers to pay the cost, which means that in most cases those medical providers would refuse to accept Medicaid patients. House Bill 3062 and Senate Bill 6726 continue DSHS interpreter services and includes a plan to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of language access services while reducing the cost. How? By removing the brokerage system and its associated overhead costs. The current brokerage system spends over 40% on overhead costs paid to middlemen as brokers and foreign language agencies. Under the bill, medical interpreter services, scheduling of interpretation visits, and reimbursement for the cost of interpretation service will be provided by DSHS directly, reducing the cost and restoring fairness to professional interpreters. Under the bill, medical interpreter services, scheduling of interpretation visits, and reimbursements for the cost of interpretation services will be provided by DSHS directly reducing overhead costs and restoring fairness to professional interpreters. In summary, House Bill 3062 and Senate Bill 6726 ends broker system, requires DCHS to contract directly with interpreters, and give union rights to interpreters. It's, it's lies that we're talking about. It's, uh, we're talking about numbers and we say, you know, um, we want to save money and we need to do that, but in the end, this is about lies. Please, support those who cannot otherwise speak for themselves. Support House Bill 3062 and Senate Bill 6726.